They say moisture is the essence of wetness. 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 But what is wetness without rain? Rain. Rain. Water isn't wet. And when that rain is insufficient to meet the evapotranspiration demand of the land, we have drought. Across the U.S., crispy, dry forests that haven't gotten enough rain for years are going up in flames. A third of the U.S. faces drought. Around the world, droughts are becoming a bigger and bigger problem as stores of water are becoming smaller and smaller. Over the past four years, Chile's main reservoir, El Yeso, has shrunk to around half its normal size. Central Asia's Aral Sea dried up for the first time in 600 years. Bolivia's second largest lake is drying up partly due to melting glaciers. And Cape Town has been on the verge of completely running out of drinking water for several years. The city even considered towing a whole iceberg from Antarctica to provide its citizens with fresh water. And like all of this isn't horrifying enough, 40% of the Earth's land is at risk of becoming a desert. The process is called desertification. It's nothing new. The collapse of the Mayan, Roman, and Babylonian empires were partly due to creeping sands overtaking them. But now, human activity combined with climate change is causing desertification to happen 35 times faster than it used to, threatening the livelihood of almost 3 billion people, 90% of whom are in developing countries. Africa has been one of the worst affected continents. The Sahara Desert has grown by 10% since 1920, extending northwards into parts of Spain, Greece, and France. And in the Sahara, Lake Chad, a water source for up to 30 million people, has shrunk by 90% since the 1960s. What remains of Lake Chad is still pretty impressive. You can barely see where the water ends and the sky begins. But look again, because most of Lake Chad is very shallow. He's waist deep due to climate change, unplanned irrigation, and population increases. And to stop the Sahara from growing, 11 countries have teamed up to build a wall of trees across the continent, or what's referred to as the Great Green Wall of Africa, hoping to halt desertification in the Sahel region. But that's probably not gonna work. Let's see what our climate expert in South Africa has to say. This is in fact, unfortunately, a very impractical idea, a futile idea in fact. This is naturally a very, very dry part of Africa with a highly variable pattern of rainfall. So if one plants trees, it is of course very, very difficult for those trees to survive. So in this part of the world, the changing climate system is likely to be the most important threat in terms of desertification happening in the future. In Southern Africa, drought has left nearly 45 million people food insecure. Part of the reason Southern Africa gets such bad droughts is because of a weather phenomenon called El Nino. Every two to seven years during the El Nino, the Pacific Ocean gets weirdly warm, which messes up weather patterns around the world. It suppresses cloud formation over Southern Africa, which means less rainfall, which means drought. Climate change has allowed El Ninos to form further west in the Pacific in even warmer waters, which could bring more frequent and intense events. We've seen the most drastic impacts in recent years in Zimbabwe. Up to 4 million people can be affected at the same time. Last year, the cascading waters of Victoria Falls were reduced to only a trickle as Zimbabwe experienced its worst drought in a century. And Kosi's over in Victoria Falls experiencing drought firsthand. Let's check in. Drought in particular has brought a serious danger in as far as the local communities is concerned. I'm standing in the midst of dangerous gullies. Due to the uncertainty and unpredictability of this weather pattern, so the gullies are busy protruding even to the right danger area. They are growing year by year. That is a big fear to me because I am going to be a victim. That is what I'm seeing in as far as my future is concerned. These deepening gullies are a direct result of erosion with drought. They make it even more difficult for Nkosi to physically reach water sources. This is a gully that is busy protruding inside the residential area. However, this gully is being caused by the heavy rains which you usually have. Uh, as a result, the soil is being washed away. The residents have found it fit uh, as a short-term measure to put some, some, some old cars just to block the gully from protruding inside the residential area. But drought doesn't always look like dust and desert and cloudless skies. 
Sometimes, like in India right now, it's floods and drought at the same time. This is a breaking news special report interruption, India edition. Welcome to Sky Med Brother. I am Mahesh Palavat. The period between June and September is referred to as Southwest Monsoon. The country receives around 70% of its annual rainfall during this period. We can say monsoon is becoming more and more unpredictable year by year. Below average rain during monsoon has become more common. Quantum of rain which used to occur in 3 to 4 days now happening in the span of 8 to 12 hours. And soil is not capable of hand to handle such heavy downpour. That was the brief update of monsoon over Indian subcontinents and its effect over a flood and desertification and drought. This has been a breaking news special report interruption. Despite monsoon rains, today almost half of the country is facing drought-like conditions. In 2019, Chennai, a city home to over 7 million people, went without rain for 200 days, emptying the city's four main reservoirs. Let's toss it over to Arun, who's restoring water bodies across India. I'm at one of the lakes in northwest Chennai. What you see behind me as the dry, large patch of land is a lake. What we are witnessing is reduced rainfall. Because of reduced rainfall, there is over-exploitation of existing water resources. When both of this couples together, it leads to massive drought-like situation, which leads to fall in vegetation, desertification, and more. As a nation that is heavily dependent on underground water systems, maintaining lakes and ponds in India is critically important. These lakes and ponds also act as buffer zones, which will help mitigate flooding or a drought-like situation. The misconception with drought is that as soon as the first rain comes in, that the drought is over. No. Extreme droughts as well as floods could produce a surge in climate migrants. Two and a half times more people are impacted by drought and floods than by armed conflict. A flood is an easy imagery that one can flash of people walking, wading through neck deep water or water gushing in, but a drought is difficult. How can you show that somebody is thirsty? How can you show that somebody does not have water for their toilets? And some countries have gone to pretty innovative lengths to fight drought. UAE and Malaysia pretty much made it fake rain by seeding clouds with a chemical. Los Angeles covered their reservoirs with millions of weird shade balls to keep their water shaded and cool. Mexico created solid rain, which is a powder solution farmers put on crops to retain water 500 times its original size. And of course, to top the Great Wall of China, China is building a 3,000 mile long Great Green Wall of Trees. We can't blame the human population in totality, but we cannot also not deny that it is human induced. It is an anthropogenic reasoning that is why we are in this climate crisis. Definitely there are natural elements to it, but those natural elements are getting aggravated or getting enhanced by human efforts, which is the reality. So overall, the cause of drought is different everywhere. Climate change isn't always the main culprit, but by all means, feel free to blame it in some capacity, because as this lovely chart shows, it definitely is a factor. <laughs>